Hi, this is Ashley and I am here to talk about Illuminate by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. So I picked this up at this point, it was three weeks ago, and I absolutely love this book. I, every, pretty much every other day or so, I go back and I read sections of this book because I absolutely love it. So let's just get into what this book is about. Illumine by J. Kristoff and Amy Kaufman is about space. And so pretty much the premise of this story is there is a mining colony on a planet called Carenza, and it is an illegal colony. And all of a sudden, a attack comes onto their world in the middle of the day while our two protagonists, Katie and Ezra, are in school. They have just broken up and this attack lays waste to their colony. And in all of the chaos, they do manage to escape the attack, which was put on by a company called Baytech, and they escape onto a group of ships in which they are able to escape. However, the relays were broken on the ship in the battle, and as a result, they cannot use their jump to jump to a closer location to get to safety. Instead, they are going to have to travel approximately, I believe it was eight months or so, eight or eight or eight months or so, eight or nine months in order for them to reach the next jump point, which is actually where Katie's father works. And so pretty much the story goes from there where you are seeing their journey as they're fleeing as the Baytech people who attack the colony are pursuing them. And really, this is a great story. Um, if you couldn't tell, it gives off a kind of Battlestar Galactica vibe. I love Battlestar Galactica, so f getting this story was really, really great to me. So briefly, I will say that my feelings toward this story was that I absolutely loved it. I ended up giving it 4.75 out of five stars. It was a really great book. It just, it hit all the right buttons for me and I was constantly wanting to pick it up. It is told in a format that is different than most books in that it is not just standard prose. What you are actually reading are reports, you're reading lists, you're reading transcribed conversations, you're seeing transcriptions of video feeds, emails, chat sessions, and even some internal coding from uh, the control system called Aiden within the ship. And I just ended up falling in love with it. It was exactly what I needed and I didn't realize that I needed it. It really filled the hole that was in my heart where I really wanted some great science fiction and I've just been feeling that I haven't just been seeing science fiction around for me to gravitate to. And so getting this was exactly what I needed. So that is all that I'm going to say for the spoiler free section of this. I really love this book. And if you like science fiction, then go ahead and check it out. It's definitely interesting with a Battlestar Galactica kind of vibe. But now I'm going to go ahead and get into the spoilers. So I'm not really going to go too in depth with the spoilers, but I just wanted to point out a number of the things in the story that I really enjoyed and that stood out to me. While reading this, I ended up taking a lot of notes. Like I took way too many more than I should have. I was constantly stopping reading so I could theorize, take notes, and just jot down information that I thought was amusing. So very early on, there was an attack on the Copernicus ship and there were a lot of people that died. And in it, we got to get this, it's this six page list. I don't know if you can see this. So six pages worth of lists and you pretty much, it's all the casualties that were in that. And through that, I noticed that there were a lot of interesting authors in here and I really enjoyed that. So some of the authors that I caught, I know that there are probably more that I didn't even catch, but these are just the ones that just jumped out to me. Joe Abercrombie, Lee Bardugo, Ryan Groudon, Melissa Gray, Amy Kaufman, Jay Kristoff, Jonathan Levithan, Ellie Marnie, George Martin, Megan Spooner, and it was just really interesting to see all of those 
authors in there. Some of them weren't mentioned directly as their actual names, but as different names, but you, it was very easy to tell. Um, so like, for example, Megan Spooner was just listed as Meg Spooner and George R. R. Martin was just written as George Martin. And I might go and comb through that list to find any more. If you notice any other authors that were in there, let me know down in the comments below. Another one of the things that I really enjoyed in this book was the relationship between the two main characters, Ezra and Katie. And while I would definitely say that Katie is the main protagonist, Ezra was definitely there a lot and he was there as a support and he's definitely her romantic interest, but I would probably say Katie was the main focus, at least in this book. And I just really love the fact that they really cared about each other and they were working through things and you really started to understand why they broke up because at first you just know that they are not together but they do seem to care about each other. And another thing that was really great was that the romance in it was not at the forefront. Yes, it was driving a lot of their motivations but they were also highly motivated just to survive in general. And I like that the focus was more on the science fiction elements than the romantic elements. Also, the conversations that were in the IM sessions were extremely funny and there were so many great moments within it that I just found myself laughing out loud in the middle of this book when I didn't expect myself to. There were also a bunch of really interesting sections like this where the text was completely different and you get things kind of spiraling and it's very easy to follow this but it's definitely really different to see that on a regular basis. Um, the other major thing that I absolutely loved about this story was Aiden. So at first, um, my first bit of notes was that Aiden is evil. But as I went on, I started to realize that Aiden was not evil. And it was just really great to see that evolution of the Aiden character because Aiden was broken, literally broken. And she just kind of evolved. And yes, I do think of Aiden as a female. I always imagined her speaking with a British voice. Aiden was constantly going through helping and trying to get them to survive and that meant at times pushing people to get them to do what she needed them to do in order for her to be able to help them. Aiden has no problem tricking people. She tricked Katie so badly to the point that one, she tricked Katie into believing that Ezra was still on the ship with Aiden and everybody that was being infected and then Two, she tricked her to believe that Ezra was actually dead when he wasn't. He just wasn't on the ship. He'd made it to safety. And it was just really great seeing how that dynamic between Katie and Aiden played out because there was this real antagonism, but they really started to get to know each other. And you could really sense that there was this friendship bonding and Aiden was starting to realize that humans weren't quite as insignificant as she had initially thought. And I'm really looking forward to see how Aiden and Katie are gonna be working together in the future, considering that Aiden is rebuilding herself because she's stored just a little bit of herself in Katie's data pad, which was enough for her to live. And it was just really great. Also, the fact that Ezra is actually alive, I was pretty certain that Ezra was dead. I really believe that because when she jumped onto the ship trying to get to Ezra, I was really confused because the last that we actually saw of him proper, he was going out into that deep mission to try to pretty much screw the Baytex ship up and then we just get nothing else from him. So I had just assumed that he actually might have died in that situation, but it turns out he didn't, which is great for Ezra and Katie, but it was just really a surprise to me that he actually was alive at the end. The only thing that I have to say is that I felt like I didn't get to get as connected to the characters as I would in a traditional book, that is only because like you don't really get to get inside of their head. You're only getting to see the external and what is observed and what they are saying to each other. So you really are like a person that's just inserted into this world and, uh, and is observing what's going on. And you make your judgments based off of that. And yes, I did come away liking Katie and Ezra, but I didn't necessarily know that I knew them very well and I am looking forward to get to know them better in the future. Yeah, I don't want to go on too long but I absolutely love Illuminae and like I said, I've been reading bits and pieces a lot and I will probably end up rereading this 
<laughs> in the near future because I just enjoyed it that much. And it's definitely going to be on my top books of the year. So why don't, if you guys have read this book, why don't you let me know what you thought of it down below in the comments and I will see you guys next time. Bye.